fair, we're gonna. Here's the thing. I've decided to try to make a resin painting with 100 layers of resin. The only problem is I freaking hate resin. But I'm not gonna let that stop me because I have my goop suit. So screw you. I just think there's so much potential to make a super deep 3D effect with that many layers, especially compared to what we've done before. The one thing that really stresses me out though is that once I put the layer of resin down, I can never go back and fix it. Imagine screwing up on like layer 87 or something. <laughs> don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. I'm not gonna try to weigh in this, so I'm gonna begin with something easy, making a sketch. I thought about a few different motifs and I think a phoenix could fit so well with this concept because we can really use the layers here like we have a wing extending in the back here, all the tail feathers sort of intertwining and the fire going in and around everywhere and I really think we can work with the transparency of the epoxy to enhance the feathers and the fire effects. I don't very often paint birds though so uh, I hope I can pull it off. And now to the real challenge, figuring out how to turn this 2D painting into a 100 layer 3D painting. 100 layers? Like how, how am I supposed to keep track of all that? I've been thinking a lot. I really don't want to sketch out every single layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a list of how many layers I want to commit to each part of the bird, right? So I'm going to start at the back because this wing is at the very back. Figure out how many layers I want to spend on that one and sort of work my way towards the front from there. All right, I got my layer plan. And what I'm gonna use to actually make this is some UV resin, which of course cures in UV light. Some acrylic paint because it dries really fast. And finally, a heat gun to get rid of all the bubbles in the resin before we cure it. Okay, <laughs> I hope this will work. Let's make a mold so we can get painting. Line art, print. Perfect. See, now I know exactly where everything's supposed to go. So far, I I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, there's not much of a 3D effect yet, but I'm only on layer six, so I guess it makes sense. I just really hope that we can see more of that 3D effect as we put down more layers, because right now it ain't that promising. <laughs> on another note, on that last layer there, Hansi just kind of popped in out of nowhere like, hey, why don't you just use the 3D printer slicer software to plan out all your layers? It's brilliant. I mean, <laughs> I would have never thought of that. And also, why didn't you say it before? <laughs> Here's the plan. First, we find a 3D model that fits what we want to paint. We open that in the 3D slicing software, then we rotate it, find the angle we want, and then we adjust the layer height and the height of the model so that we get exactly 100 layers. And now the magic is I can just scroll through every single layer and I can see exactly what I'm supposed to paint on every single layer. Thank you, Hans. You saved me so much time. So going forward, we're using the slicer. And let's just hope it looks more 3D in the next couple of layers, please. Okay, let's paint. We are now on layer 17 and perhaps unsurprisingly the thing that takes the most time is just applying the resin, trying to remove all the bubbles, curing the resin and then letting it air out a bit before bringing it back in. Like painting the layers goes so fast but the resin part is so slow. <laughs> Let's paint some more layers.
39 layers complete and oh my god it's looking so much better and so much more 3d let me show you. I think the 3D effect is especially apparent where things are overlapping. So like this ring of fire goes in between the feathers here. And of course you can see the feathers going in layers up in this part. You can really see the 3D effect. So I think once we move on to like the main body and have all the other elements in the foreground that covers up a bit of the background, it's gonna look oh so good. Oh, and as you probably saw, I'm now curing all the resin out here in the storage room because it's much better ventilation out here. So Hansi Hello. set up this little curing station. It's a bit wonky, but... <laughs> <laughs> With a heating chamber for the UV resin to make it more liquid. We have the UV lights, heat gun, everything we need out here so we can keep the mess <laughs> in this place. Amazing! Thank you, Hansi. Very cool. Success! <laughs> the next layer is layer 40 and it's gonna look something like this. We already have painted this feather and of course the wing up here. We're gonna add some more paint to this flowy area right here. And also we have to start on another tail feather because that one is gonna turn out like this. And it has to begin at this point and then it's gonna curl to the front here. So we gotta start at the very back. I can really just feel the anxiety for screwing up just building with every layer. Oh, okay, just gotta do it. Just gotta continue. And if I mess up, th th then I'm gonna cry. <laughs> It'll be fine. Huh. Layer 40, let's go. Before we move on, it's time for an ad for Milanote. Milanote is a tool for organizing your creative projects. And I used it to plan out this project. I started with this nice project planning template, which keeps an overview of everything, while at the same time divides a project into more specific topics. I started off with writing down the goal for the project and some initial to-dos I had in the beginning. I then did some visual brainstorming with different ideas and inspiration material I had for the project before fully committing to the Phoenix motif. I then moved on to making a mood board with images I found inspiring, and I figured I needed a weekly plan, so I made a new board with a planner template to organize my week. There's over a hundred built-in templates, so I'm sure you'll find something for your project. You can also easily share your board with colleagues and clients so you can gather feedback and collaborate. So if you think this sounds interesting, Milanote is free to use with no time limit. So make sure to sign up with the link below and start your next creative project. And back to the project. Dude, I just cured layer 75 and it's looking so cool. But also there are a couple of things that are looking a little bit funky that I didn't quite foresee in the beginning. It's especially apparent like right there with this feather. It's supposed to go behind the main body of the bird, but when you shift the perspective, you can kind of see that it's detached from the body. And you can kind of see the tendency of the wing here as well. Depending on where you see it, it might be attached or it might just be floating. So um, yeah, uh, that's just uh, unfixable. <laughs> I mean, I guess I should have painted on every single layer on top of that to like attach it to the body, but it just, it just felt weird and I didn't do it. And now it just, it's floating <laughs> in space. <laughs> There's also these weird bubbles on every side here. Don't know how they got there. And I don't know if it's going to be a problem. All I know is I can't take off the sides yet. Like I have to finish it and just hope it doesn't look too bad. Or if it looks bad, at least I hope I can fix it. <laughs> so the next step now is just finish. There's the main body, the head, the leg, and of course, the big wing in the foreground. Oh, I've been looking forward to this one. Just think about all the feathers. <gasps> I've painted on this for over a week, long days, so many layers. I haven't screwed up yet, but I can really feel my anxiety levels just go whoop. Now that I'm about to start the final couple of layers, let's freaking do this. <laughs>
100 layers complete. It's been two weeks and I've been waiting for this moment since the start and I'm so nervous to pick this apart now because I can see the bubbles and I have a little bit of a bad feeling about this. <laughs> First, remove the glue. So now let's just try to like break it open with force. What's going on here? <laughs> okay, uh, let's just get the other sides off so we can inspect it a bit closer. Oh, that really just, I've never had a mold pop off so easily. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's heavy. <gasps> okay, that's really cool. But I don't love the sides. What's going on here? It kind of looks like I tried to make like a river of epoxy. I'm not sure how to fix it. I want to clean up the sides around here first and maybe we can just try to like make a really liquid UV resin and try to brush it on here. Please work. I don't want to sand. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness that worked. Oh, it's smooth. It's perfect. Well, not perfect, but quite nice. <laughs> Two weeks of work, 100 layers later, and we are finally finished. Yes! <laughs> Man, it was such a fun experiment, and I really think the 3D effect this time is way better than anything we've done before. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> now, what did we learn this time? I suppose my three main takeaways from this would be... I'm not gonna do the rest in that accent. <laughs> and also not with it. Glass. Number one, have a solid plan. Plan out your sketch, your layers, your colors, and also make sure you have a nice area to work in, somewhere well ventilated. Number two, use less paint. Thinner layers of paint with more resin just seem to make a much better depth and 3D effect. And number three, don't use 100 layers. It's way overkill, not necessary. I'm sure you could get just as nice an effect with way less layers. It was a fun experiment though, but I'm never doing it again. <laughs> and as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our patrons for continuing to support us. You guys are awesome. And now it is time. Let's have a look at the final result. Thank you.